Hello there, so your body breaks into a cold sweat. Fear consumes your entire being as you think, this button. This button marks the end of time. That's a reaction I'm sure some of you had after seeing this on the OSU website just a couple weeks ago. The new design is at our doorstep, and the button switching between both versions is the final thread connecting us to pink and purple wonderland. What does this have to do with mapping? One of the biggest changes on the new website is a new modding platform titled Modding Discussions, which, when the new site is fully established, will leave the forum modding we're accustomed to inaccessible. That said, I feel like the end of this transition phase might be the best time to talk about what's led up to this point. In this video, I'll be covering two main things. First, a timeline of how modding discussions have been developed from an outsider's point of view, including how mappers have reacted along the way. And second, the pros and cons of the near-eliminated forum modding versus modding discussions. So, when did the modding discussion system begin? Six months ago is what a lot of people would say. That's when modding discussions were forced on all newly uploaded beatmaps, but I'm thinking about earlier than that. Much earlier than that. Modding discussions, introduced as Modding V2 at the time, were part of a proposal written nearly five years ago now, intended as part of a change to the entire ranking procedure. In short, this forum thread explains what plans for the future of modding and nominations were, with some sample pages to play around with. The ones labeled Real-Time Modding System are the first instances of modding discussions as we know them, and the links are unfortunately dead. But I do recall what they looked like. As you should know, modding discussions today separate maps into general sections and difficulty specific sections, which modding v2 of five years ago handled as well, just in a format more similar to the old website's user page dropdowns. Each box would have mod content for that specific part of a map set, allowing for better organization than scattered forum posts, assuming I remember correctly. So that was the first form of modding v2, but along with that was a document here, the juicy meat of the proposal. I find it especially interesting to look at ancient stuff like this years after they've been abandoned to see what parts have been implemented, forgotten, or are even still planned for the future in some cases. The flowchart at the top <laughs> dates this document right off the bat. It basically describes the qualification process, which wasn't part of OSU until a few months later. The areas below this are more complicated. Imagine a modding queue that involves literally every modder in the game, where all pending beatmaps are sorted to prioritize maps with the fewest mods, as well as the most kudos stars. Maps with high positions in the queue are assigned to people automatically for mods in modding v2, and if queue members fulfill their tasks, they're rewarded points. Modders can also work outside of this queue's assignment if they want, though they won't earn as many points, and will actually lose points for ignoring any tasks. These points aren't for just showing off on your profile as just another useless stat though, they actually grant a modder extra permissions. By simply modding through the queue effectively, someone can become a nominator with next to no hassle. All this was part of the modding v2 proposal. With this system in place, the bat would split into two groups, potentially any community members could become nominators, and the qualified section could begin activity. All of which did end up happening, unlike the global modding queue. The idea is to change the priorities of which maps are ranked, giving all mappers a fair chance rather than favoring popular songs slash mappers. Fairness, especially in nominations, is what mappers all desire, but you can probably imagine why this modding queue part of the proposal was received negatively. Gamifying modding meant that to receive perks, people would have to mod maps that they didn't necessarily want to, which yeah, is a perfectly reasonable concern. Going against the will of people doing something for fun kind of ruins the experience, so the mod queue part of this modding v2 proposal wasn't ever implemented. Deep down, I kind of wish it was though, just because I'd like to see how it played out. The closest thing we got was BN ranking, which didn't involve the modding discussion format at all. Anyway, after this initial surge of change, it looked like modding v2, as in the discussion page, was fully dropped, but three years later, in April 2016, it revived for public testing under an entirely new visual design. Through these old screenshots, you can see something that resembles the modding discussion panel we know today. It's got a fancy yet still barebones aesthetic, a timeline at the top, post sorting, and a voting system. Testing was handled the same as before. Two map sets were chosen for users to mod as they would normally, only through the new system, and that revealed just how much was missing. Modding v2 lacked so many essentials and was unbearably clunky to use, leading to a full thread of feedback and bug reports, then like last time, it faded from public interest. Skip forward another year and modding v2 finally used the visual design we're familiar with. 
Design was the main difference though. Despite looking like what we know now, modding v2 from this point forward received tons of changes. Various maps were selected for public testing again, and functionality was tightened up. One of my maps was included in that testing too, and from it, anyone can see the big changes that came afterwards, like the resolving of praise comments or the reopening of issues by anyone, both of which are no longer possible. This testing period also left legacy of developer nonsense scattered throughout my map. Highly appreciate it. Once again though, this round of testing revealed that modding v2 wasn't quite ready. The maps that tried to push to rank through it encountered major systemic problems along the way, one map being forced to receive nominations in the old system. Clearly, modding v2 needed some fixes. But it didn't go into hiding like the last two runs. It was kept around and mappers could get their modding forum threads converted to modding discussion panels by higher-ups manually. By summer 2017, there were around 50 pending maps using modding v2, which should have provided developers with all the feedback they needed. And they didn't. The people willingly opting for the new system were the ones who had the least complaints about it, while the complainers were the ones who could provide the most actual feedback. To get more of that feedback, there was one obvious solution to this. Shove it down everyone's throats. But with good intentions. September 26th was the day that every new uploaded map used modding v2. In other words, unbridled mapper rage. People felt like promoting a buggy and inconvenient to use unfinished system was stupid, but really it was the most valuable move its developers could make. With a large enough user base, concerns could more easily be noticed, and there were a lot of concerns. To organize the chaos, a discussion channel in Osu's development discord server was established, and from there, complaints well, somewhat, turned into something actually productive. Issues were directed to GitHub for more practical management, and modding v2 received changes almost non-stop. Most of those changes went unnoticed because of how minor they were, but so many minor things eventually add up into a reasonably usable modding discussion system. Well, calling modding v2 reasonably usable even today gets people riled up still. Within the minor changes were some alterations that had major effects on mappers, starting in October with the introduction of hype. This really just came from nowhere. It was a requirement of getting 12 people to post praise comments on beatmaps before nomination buttons are accessible. Hype was seen as an unnecessary obstacle by mappers, delaying maps from rank for no clear reason, yet devs tried to make their intentions clear. Gaining hypes was just a way to get more eyes on a map and a, quote, fun thing for less experienced mappers to aim for when heading for rank. Whether those are good reasons is up to you to decide, but either way, hype stuck around with some modifications. 12 hypes was turned into 5 per map, and hypes were limited per user to give them a bit of value. Next, an essential part of the ranking process, revoking nominations on maps with ranking criteria violations, was added to modding discussions on December 5th. No one really took issue with that, but a change tied to it a month later was the automatic revoking of nominations whenever maps with the one nomination were updated. From a quality control standpoint, making sure both nominators view the most updated version of a map makes sense. However, that's just not the way things had been done up until now. Forcing extra time before a map reached qualified was what this felt like, leading to, you guessed it, a lot of complaints. And that leads up to the current date, when old modding is on the brink of extinction thanks to the design switch button. You've realized by now that general perception of modding v2 among those who map actively has never been too great. Some people like it, but their voices are overshadowed by the screams from those who dislike it, as to be expected from any sort of big change. After using both the forums and modding discussions for quite a while though, I think I'm capable of judging my own personal pros and cons for each, which may let you know why I'm not so starkly against modding v2. I'll keep this somewhat brief by covering just what I find most important, starting with the forums. Pros. Everything is in one place. There's no tabs to switch between making it easier to see the big picture. The thread system also makes it easy to know what's recent and therefore relevant. When I get an email notification, I'm sent to the latest post, whereas in modding v2 I'm drowned in old comments. And lastly, the forums just seem more fun. They're a bit more casual and they leave room for jokes that can't be done in modding discussions. They're, I guess, personal and that's a big appeal. The cons though. It's repetitive. There's no easy way to track what about a map has been criticized before, so modders repeat the same concerns sometimes. Forums are also hard to get into. The formatting hoops modders go through are stupidly complex and take a lot of getting used to. And lastly, it's stagnant. The forums are tied to a bigger system not intended for mapping and therefore need to be worked around. So, okay, the forum has some problems, but it's fine for someone like me who's familiar with them, yet I think one of the main points of modding v2 was to simply remove that familiarity barrier. Like, here's what I consider the most important pros for modding discussions. Mod content is less repetitive. Mod length is no longer a relevant factor. Providing feedback is more intuitive. 
and conversation is clearly focused on distinct concerns. All of those shouldn't need elaborations, they're cons of the forum system that we're all just used to. The biggest difference between the systems is what I value most though. Modding discussions can and will change. Modding discussions have their cons, definitely. There's pages worth of concerns on GitHub, guest difficulty handling is inconvenient, and kudos as a currency has been hugely devalued. Will those always be issues though? If I had to guess, no. Modding discussions are tailor-made for, well, modding. We're no longer using a repurposed platform, so we'll have the opportunity to work with much more, like eventual modding in the game client and other features that would never exist in the forums. For example, maps at activity pages. These are currently accessible only to moderators, but are planned to be publicly available since really they don't have any sensitive information. There are cool stats for everything you could ask for, like a nomination feed, a disqualification feed, a feed of just what's being modded, and the same thing for individual users. None of this would have happened with the forum. The design of modding discussions itself is also being modified as per user feedback, which again, wouldn't happen on the forums. Neither system is perfect, I know that, but if I had to choose between the forums and modding discussions, I think the second of those would definitely be the better choice in the long run. So yeah, modding discussions have been around for longer than you may have known, and just now we're coming in full fruit. Mostly. I'm still waiting for the day the prophesized points slash reputation system comes into play though since that'll probably be the most engaging change. Whether it would be successful or not is a topic for another time. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.